Wilson, Hriday and Deepak sir, I feel extremely honored. Thanks again for coming. And uh, I, I feel absolutely honored that you have accepted my invite. So thank you. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for having us. No, not at all. Um, maybe, Hriday, before we start, start get into the podcast, uh, I may request you to sing anything that comes to your mind as a start off. So if that's okay with you, just pick any song that comes to your mind. <laughs> so this is uh, one of the first songs I sang for, so, so I think it would be a good, good one to start with. Also. Sure. Uh, it was a film called uh, Dekar Ham Diwana. Yeah, yeah. Really fun song. Beautiful man, amazing. You're, you're singing with so much ease. How is that possible? <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, sometimes just the melody, you know. Uh, I feel like for us as musicians also, when we uh, yeah. sing a song, if the melody is interesting and is fun, it gets so much easier to sing because, you know, you connect with it so much easier yeah. than, you know, having a burden. But so yeah. it's, it's a joy. You have no idea how glued I was to this song when it came out. It still plays on my Spotify, to be honest with you. One amazing track, man. And, well, maybe on that note, have you got any memories of that recording with Sir, given that that was one of your first songs? Yeah, that's actually a very interesting memory for both me and Jonita, you know. So, uh, yeah. she had come to record for some other film and I was recording another song for the same mm -hmm. film called Shining, the other song that yeah. I sang. We had no clue that this song was going to happen that day, but mm. he just told Jonita and me to come upstairs to the uh, to, to the other studio. We went up and we were wondering, and I was like listening to this tune, which was really cool, and I was like, nice. <laughs> and I just thought I was hanging, you know, I had no clue I was going to be singing the song. And Jupita went in and she sang, and I was like, wow, so this song is sounding so cool, I love it, I love it. And she's like, okay, now you go. And I was like, huh? <laughs> He's like, yeah, why you don't want to sing? I said, no, no, of course I want to sing. <laughs> and that's great. Like, I literally no clue that we were doing this song. But yeah, it was a lot of fun. Awesome. Uh, in fact, Sasha had come to the podcast the other day and then uh, I told her that Hriday is coming soon and she said, he has got one amazing voice. Tell him. <laughs> she, was, uh, she has another very, very beautiful voice. Amazing yeah. soul. Yeah. yeah. I agree. I agree. Uh, because I uh, I became friends with her in my recent trip to India. I, I came, I flew down to Trichy for the concert, and that's when I met Sasha for the first time. And we just hit off friends as friends like this in a minute, and um, we've been in touch. And then I told her, look, I've started off this podcast. It's just that I just want to celebrate Sir's music, and it's just all about that. And she said, yeah, let's do this. <laughs> Love and she's extremely grounded too. And uh, well, I mean. Um, so coming over to you, um, you have been with AR for a long, long time and I uh, would love to know, what, when did it all start? Started late 95. Wow. Right. <laughs> and may I ask how? How did that happen? <laughs> That's been quite an interesting thing. Actually, um, we've been, I mean, I've been around doing this kind of work since, uh, probably the uh, end of 80s, right. but when as music came out in the early 90s, uh, yeah. I've been incidentally working with Hari Aran before. Yeah. So, when I heard the songs, I told Hari, man, I want to meet Rahman and I want to do his work. 
<laughs> so when you get the chance, please introduce me. Yeah, that's how it happened once. Ari was recording in Chennai, and then he said, "Hey, can you come over?" I said, "Sure." He said, "I said, then." He said, "Come now." I said, "Now." I said, "Now." I didn't come. I remember I was working in the middle of something. Ran to the airport, took the flight, reached Chennai, and that's how I met him. Yeah, yeah. the meeting was. Interesting. Um, I was waiting outside in that uh, small office he had inside the studio. I mean, yeah, outside yeah. the studio. In, yeah. In, and uh, kept waiting, and then he came. I think he came after the prayers. And uh, um, Noel James used to manage his work at yeah. time, office yeah. work. And um, I was sitting with Noel, and he yeah, walked in. He didn't even enter the room. He stood at the gate on the door of the uh, Noel. So he's Deepak. He's come from Bombay. He looked at me. He said hi. I said hi. And then he went away. <laughs> right. I was okay. Is that it? I I came from Bombay and that's it. So I didn't know what to do. I called up Hari and I said Hari, what should I do? He says hang on. Hari right. spoke to Salman and he called me back. He says you know what? He wants you to do the concert. I said. Ah. <laughs> With an high, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The first show happened in uh, Malaysia. Wow! In 19- that was right. the first proper official uh, live concert ever. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And the thing is, I mean, um, one of the guys uh, who still works for Sir, I don't want to name him now. I'll tell you off the record later. He said you were the one who. Pushed AR to go front on the stage, saying, "No, AR, you can't be shy. You got to go forward." And you were uh, he he says that if it wasn't you, AR wouldn't probably wouldn't have done it. Well, yeah, to a large extent, I would say it is true. But uh, you know what? I mean, he was very um, probably uh, I wouldn't call it stage fright, but I think yeah. He has always been a very introvert as a person. Yeah. He's opened up a lot more of late, but yeah. earlier days, it would be hard to. Like I said, my first meeting was just one word. <laughs> <laughs> Get yeah. him to sit with the um, audience size of almost three thousand people, and then expect him to connect instantly. Probably was uh, not a natural thing for him. Right. But surprisingly, so because the earlier AR when he was known as Dilip before AR. Yeah. Yeah, uh, he was a rocker. He used to perform with so many, and everybody had a band. So yeah, I mean, knowing that person, and then suddenly not wanting to be very much in the forefront yeah. is a different uh, position in the personality, I guess. Yeah, right. we just had to give him that little uh, initial push, you know. And yeah, uh, and actually, it's his personality. He's not one of those uh, guys who jump on stage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Now he does jump on the stage. I've I've seen it uh, myself. <laughs> <laughs> you see what happens is it's also the mindset. If you're let go, let loose, and you're enjoying yourself, and you're not yeah. having any stress, then automatically it just falls in place. And when your audience reacts with you, they connect with you. It's a two-way affair. Yeah. So it all yeah. works. Yeah. Yeah. True. And I remember seeing you for the first time on the on the screens was in the Airtel ad. <laughs> <laughs> uh it was just amazing i mean you have no idea how glued i was to that track uh, sorry the ad just to see ar and every he picked up the phone he talks to you oh my goodness that was amazing what was it like i'm just curious that is a very different story actually you know um, so my background is that i have actually come from the advertising industry in yeah. initial yeah i had some who was who was still in the industry and um um something happened and by communicating there was this campaign that was discussed and uh, mm-hmm. so i suggested to the the part of the agency i don't want to mention the names mm-hmm. but uh, so i said why don't you look at the option of raman you know i mean mm-hmm. obviously it's the, the kind of uh, mm-hmm. style that he has and you guys want to position yourselves from a musical angle mm-hmm. better choice you know mm-hmm. And uh, then the agency came with some ideas, and obviously the first idea that came was very uh, typical kind that you would want to be some be a model, not so yeah. much so much which, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which uh, kind of said, "Look, this won't work with a person like him. You need to use him the way he is, rather than yeah. like a yeah. self, uh, kind of a model." So yeah. that's 
can and did he develop the campaign and the NIR said yes. First, he was also a little uh, wary of the thought that I can't model. <laughs> 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 As he explained to him the uh, idea of the campaign, the first thing that yeah. was done was com compose the tune. Yeah. And that tune, yeah. you all know, is history. You know, it's one of the, it has become the yeah. brand or the face of yeah. the brand actually. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Shumia, I mean, yeah. The film was being shot and one of those guys was looking for this. They said, we should cast and then suddenly one of the people on the agency said, hey, you are there. No, why do we need to cast anybody else? <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, so I also remember this. Uh, I've been in Australia for the last 20 years. I came here as a student and I've been here since. Um, and I do remember during one of my trips to India, uh, my folks live in Bangalore. I made a trip and then, then there was a concert, uh, live concert of AR. And I still remember spotting you then back in the days. This could have been like 2002 or 2003, I think, in Palace Grounds. Um I saw this guy running around like crazy from one end to the other, trying to manage everything. And of course, I was right in the front. And then that's when I spotted you after spotting you in the Airtel ad back in the days. <laughs> uh, yeah, it just brings back memories. And by the way, sir, uh, well, I've been talking to other guys who have been part of the journey of Rapport Global, no doubt about it. And one of the things... Alphonse wanted me to say this to you, saying he had the most amazing time during the Rapport Global Days. And he wanted wanted me to say a very, very big hello to you. <laughs> uh, big love to the guy. I, I, I think that he is extremely talented, multifaceted talent. Yeah. So very he has yeah. is so, so, so unique. Yeah. The right Correct. word is unique. Correct. He has amazingly unique voice. That yeah. one song, people even if you perform that one song at the concert, people will remember that one song amongst the thirty songs that are performed. You know, so I agree. So, I agree. So, uh, and yeah. that's that's exactly what happened in the Trichy concert as well recently. And uh, so he 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 just set the whole stage on fire with that song. Something just happens to him when he does that. And then we became very good friends. We hung out in the backstage. And then now recently, I've been extremely busy working with him to set up his online music academy. Um, so that's been very successful. And we, we just had an interview with Microsoft India as well last week. And it's going to come out in the press very soon. So uh, he's extremely excited about that. And during those conference calls is when I told him that Hriday and his dad are coming. And he said, oh, please say my big hello to Deepak, sir. I enjoyed so much in those days. <laughs> anyway, uh, dude, Rida, coming to you, man, I do know that AR has been your mentor, right? I was just keen to know, what does it take to get AR to be a mentor? I mean, just out of curiosity, what magic did you do that AR was ready? It never happened like you walked into the door and said, AR, you're my mentor from today. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, think, I think it's uh, part of couple of things. I think one is, and the first thing is, I think, luck. And uh, just, uh, yeah. it's a blessing, I feel. You know? Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, would kill to be in my position. <laughs> and, you know, you can kind of um, advise and nurturing I've gotten mm -hmm. from sir. Mm -hmm. uh, you know? And um, also, I think initially, I, I don't want to blow my own trumpet, but <laughs> I think it was my, I think I was very enthusiastic about learning from <laughs> Yeah. And uh, that helped. I think that he liked and enjoyed. But more importantly, I feel like for sure, you know, he's he's the kind of human being that if anybody would ask him for help, yeah. he's the kind of human being he would give to him. True. So, or if you walk into the room and say, "Sir, you're my mentor," he he'll be like, "You oh. <laughs> 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 yeah. want to for me?" He's really sweet that way. He's very encouraging, not just yeah. you know to me, but to everybody who's at the studio. Um, and with uh, the flourishing of like uh, KM music right now, yeah. Uh, yeah. KM College, I mean, yeah. uh, there are a lot of you know kids mm -hmm. who are getting a lot of opportunities. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, he's very very interested in the youth, and yeah. he's yeah. very very hopeful that the youth do something. Yeah. Uh, and right. you know, obviously, future. So he wants to invest his time into that. So he keeps talking about, you know, the kind of things we should do, uh, yeah. not just for individually, but for uh, us in uh, unanimity. You know. Yeah. So, yeah. And 
while he was your mentor he still your mentor do you get yelled by him too i'm just curious i have actually i have like a couple of times and uh, wow yes yeah, i've never i've never been nice scared in my life because like, i was just like getting yelled who's doesn't see who's like the most, that's the most un, uh, assuming thing right for him to do yeah. he seems such a, i mean he is uh, generally you know he's it's very rare that he yells at somebody yeah but then and there also the great reasons because whatever yeah. he yells me for i've learned so much from it uh, there never been <laughs> mistakes again <laughs> but yeah i mean it's scary you know getting yelled at by ya yeah, rehman is not <laughs> <true>. <laughs> <laughs> right and buddy one of the other songs that totally blew my mind and of course uh, you had a huge fan following i'm sure after that is for you my love right and oh. do you have any memories to share about that man with the recording and how did it all happen it's one amazing track i have to say yeah it was really interesting you know with for you my love uh, the entire background score of the film bad blinded by the light was done yeah. by then uh uh he he wanted to do something you know mm. as one of, basically in the film boy writes a poem and mm. it was supposed to turn into a song yeah and, and um, we were looking for something very interesting so we wanted to do something uh mm. which you know uh, also had a little bit of sufism and had a thought a very very strong solid mm. so uh, he came up with the idea of doing something where uh, mm. have a nice english ballad which will go yeah. to a sufi style qawali you know yeah <laughs> and yeah i just i think you know with so the thing is you can't um, you can't judge when an idea is at its yeah. germ level um, so it just builds you know it builds 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 and we, i saw it happen in front of me because i was there uh, fortunately for this song i was there from literally inception of the basic yeah. tune till the uh, yeah it was done and it was a beautiful experience actually one of the right. first that song song being built from the beginning to the end mm. so, so and do you remember how long the recording session went for i'm just curious uh, so actually what's interesting is we started with my part uh, mm. the english and we finished that on the first night in about an hour or so because so mm. i was also coming up with the arrangement and stuff so he played mm. the piano mm. and mm. sang the sang the song and then we started assembling the rest of the band of the song uh, but the entire process took a while because there was a lot of back and forth um, from the point of view of like getting things recorded strings recorded this recorded the guitar recorded wow and, uh, i played some guitars in that song actually I played some electric guitars in that song that was the first time i played on 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 so strang as a musician wow you know some couple of notes like wow uh, it took it took i think I for the five days to complete wow, the yeah. for us. Yeah. Amazing song though. Look, look. Uh, I'll leave it to you. But if, is that something that you could maybe yeah. sing or hum for us? What I'd love to. It's actually very special. You know, the uh, very special thing is so me and Parag. Uh, yeah. 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 We and we we studied together at K and really? College. Wow. The same. So we always you know we always had this thought that um, Rehman sir, Rehman sir, we all you know we have this fan club. Me and him. always in college and little did we know that we'd be singing a song together and being in video with him it was just mind blowing like so man <clears throat> so you my love so you my love right through the rain only for you for you i give up everything for you i give you my love you my love you my love you <laughs> man what a song uh amazing really cool you're really blessed man you're a blessed child sir how does it feel when you have such a talented son like him uh, <laughs> interesting <laughs> <laughs> because whenever i speak and give some kind of a 
my own point of view it's an interesting interaction <laughs> yeah. there's a lot of push back here you know <laughs> yeah. yeah so i mean the thing is i mean coming back to you again uh, back in the days if it wasn't music what would you actually talk to ar about what like what would he talk about i'm just curious you hung out with him for a long time yeah, yeah. so there are very different uh, things that um, yeah has always been very very excited about mm. anna uh, is obviously in the part yeah but uh, the other two things which are uh, ta- uh, staunch memories in my mind is um, just loves to shop right say shops not the typical shopping his shopping is like going to an electronics store yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was all something so if there's anything that used to come out new he used to tell us and then if i'm around we used to go nearby stores and just <laughs> yeah <beach. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> then he has a right. keen interest on is the movie yeah. Yeah. right right that is which probably yeah we do have chats and i watched a few movies together in the us well. yeah yeah we watch movies together we discuss ideas we discuss scripts we discuss a lot of things i incidentally write myself so i've bounced over a lot of my creative ideas to me and that's little really interaction and uh, right. the, this particular different entertainment industry which is the like um, besides the live which is the cinematic world. and also right. thing, you know uh, you know in fact he's actually very very uh, well read so oh very well read. unbelievably well read so you know he wow. i had a conversation about any he can like we had a conversation with him about literally like crises is all around the world or mm-hmm. it's it's be about you know the um, spiritualism religion yeah. so it's a yeah. lot of knowledge and uh, yeah yeah for sure uh in fact i still remember when uh, when this corona thing started and we started to experience the lockdown uh, situation here i i took pictures of the empty streets of melbourne when i had to go for the last day of my work to pick up my laptop and stuff and i sent it to him and he straight away responded saying very glad the pollution is less that was his perspective <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me tell you is amazing yeah, he's got a great sense of humor it comes for sure. across very surprisingly to people because people think that he is a very soft spoken and a very introvert but he has a great so you just need to catch it and you got to catch that right punch line that he sends it to you you know uh, oh, that i agree yeah. i totally agree <laughs> uh because of the fact that uh this is my office slash arr room of course no prizes for guessing i got arr's pictures here behind <laughs> me all the pictures that i have taken with him with every trip of mine to india and stuff like that so i set up this room and i took pictures of this and i sent it to him and less than 30 seconds i got a response from him saying it's time for you to get married <laughs> oh <my> god <laughs> and every time he told every, every time he told me that <laughs> yeah okay right and then uh, i'm also into <laughs> I also get very creative when I uh, make my breakfast, lunch, and all that. And I once it turned out really cool that I could not resist sending him a picture. So I sent him that picture, and he again straight away responded saying, "The very good bridegroom material and the smile." <laughs> it just blew me apart. And then yeah, anyway. So uh, in fact, Rehana Ma'am had also come to the. a podcast just about a week ago and then looks like they have had the conversation at home too and she said sir is saying as a fatherly figure hence why you should get married soon i'm like the pressure is too much now <laughs> yeah like so i and, and so of the record and the pressure is here <laughs> <laughs> I I'm sure when he watches it this, uh, this podcast he will be smiling I'm pretty sure about that. <laughs> and so uh, do you do you get to talk to him frequently though? Just curious. Awfully? Yeah. Uh not so much. Right. Yeah. While well, yes we do have it. Right. Okay, great. I was just curious and uh so I mean 
Uh, one of the things is, uh, like, for example, some of the guys who came to the podcast uh, recently, right, they, they said there is something about special about Deepak Sir's way of doing things. And, and there is no restriction. This is, and this is, this, is not, this is not being offensive or defensive about anyone else. But in general, their perspective was that they had the most amazing time in all the concerts that they have been while you were running it. So, <laughs> so, and this is not just one person, but a number of guys telling me about it. So I thought I should let you know. I didn't want to name them while we were in this podcast, but I'll... Let me, get, let me tell you the other way around. For us, for me, I mean, um, 34 years now in this industry, out of which yeah. uh, 20, 20 plus years with AI, besides mm. of the other stuff. But uh, I, it's, I would give it my top most uh, perished moments and memories in my entire career. Right. Because I've done so much more beyond uh, yeah. Yeah. with it. Yeah. But the kind of stuff that I have enjoyed working and doing. So let me tell you that he. He uh, would allow me to go out and try those stuff. You know, yeah. Because I don't think the bring back yeah. if it goes. Yeah. But yeah, um, uh, yeah that, that understanding was amazing. You know, yeah. Especially when I knew things. I remember one of the first time when I, wanted, I went to him and I said, uh, it was for Australia only. Yeah. When we came with a third dimension tour and I said, I want to do a 3D concert. Are you yes. mad? <laughs> <laughs> I said, yeah, let's do it. No, I've got some ideas and something there. So we kind of uh, gave it a shot and it didn't stop me, of course. Yeah. So it wasn't a good concert. But at least we did seven, eight songs in the entire uh, concert with 3D. Yeah. I don't know whether you had come for that show. I had. I had. You had? You had, okay. I, I, would, I would have come for every show. <laughs> <laughs> it seems because what happens is with such kind of experiences, you... Uh, uh, you kind of these are the things you can never forget. Yeah, and uh, which is why you feel that uh, it's too precious to even explain as to what it means to you, what mm. it means to your life. Mm. And I think those days were different, no? Like they had tours. I remember but their first tour was like a uh, jing bang of 150, 100, 120 people. More naming mm. like actually 100, 200 people traveling to the US together for two months, wow. staying like wow. so. Yeah. That that experience is. Also, you know, something should never be able to get. Yeah, again. yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Tour to KR with uh, to the US. Ninety uh, percent um, of the music singing as a playback singers industry uh, from India. Recording <laughs> <laughs> in in, uh, in India or oh, why Bombay? Even Japan. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, was almost like stopped. You know, like oh God, <laughs> everyone was like, and in, there are people who actually. Because of certain singers not being available, people got a break that time. <laughs> <because of laughs> right. Yes. Amazing. And I also was, um, you know, requested to pass this on to you by one of the guys who has worked with you in one of the tours was, Sir, when are you coming back and doing the concert? This is what <laughs> I was asked to tell. So, sir, what's your take on this? I'm always ready. <laughs> I'm always dreaming. I always have new ideas. I always want to do stuff. I guess the right time when it comes. Like yeah. always AI says God willing, the right time for the right <laughs> thing in the right place. It will always <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Right. Rude, coming to you, man. I mean, uh, of course, Sir's your mentor and then you yourself, you're such a great singer. Do you listen to your own tracks? I'm just curious. Uh, does Spotify or Apple Music on your phone have your tracks as well? And if yes. it does, if it does play, do you get picky on the fact that shit? I should have done better here. I should have done better there. Or I'm just curious. It's like, it's like a nice gradient, you know. It's like oh, right. it's my first song, and then I hear today's song. It's like a yeah. it's like a ladder, or, or <laughs> my ladder. and um, as yeah. much as you, I, I I not to be too nitpicky about those things, but uh, definitely you see a very mm. Hmm. I definitely see a lot of growth uh, in the musical maturity and just my style also. Hmm. 
But uh, more than anything else, you know, sometimes I, I just feel very blessed and yeah, happy having songs. And uh, I, yeah. I never imagined that you know I'd be a playback singer and I'd be singing songs which would be available to the entire world, <laughs> listen to and. Uh, be on such a big platform with one of the biggest musicians in the world so yeah. i think it's yeah. just something i wish and <laughs> i really listen to that that show <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the thing is i still remember i i have seen you perform live uh, this is in 2017 in uh, uh, november or december 2017 i had flown to delhi for the encore concert Oh okay. Uh I was in Shangri-La in the same hotel as AR just because I wanted to meet him I went and stayed in the same hotel. Of course that's when I met him for the first time in person and that's when I told him I've come all the way from Australia just to see you. He's like you're crazy. <laughs> and that craziness never stopped. I've done so many trips to just to go see him and see you all guys uh, perform and of course I saw you perform uh live there. You were just amazing man. That was the first time I saw you and I was right in the front, the front row. and truly amazing it, it was great to see such a new talent coming up and performing with the legend i felt really good <laughs> and and the thing is i mean you also recently performed in pune right uh and did you perform ahimsa or was i did actually yeah uh, so we were we were supposed to do i think we did ahimsa and yeah, uh, yeah that's it we did a, we i i did ahimsa with uh, yeah How how was it? Yeah, it was. A, I, I was super excited. <laughs> a, I was excited because I got to work on the track. Uh, yeah, yeah. And like I got to work in the pre-production stage of the track also. Um, yeah. And I remember the scratch of the song. You know, the the rough idea that so had come up with went in my voice to Bono and stuff like that. So I was on top of the world. <laughs> and yeah. I've exchanged emails with Edge, the guitarist. So wow. I was. <laughs> Anything else? For me, I had a very interesting experience uh, with this particular one. This uh-huh. is my just second time ever in my entire life that I was actually sitting as part of the audience for a Rahman concert. Wow! Yeah. Oh, wow! Really amazing. <laughs> yeah, because otherwise I've never been. We've always been working during the shows. So this is once yeah. and once I had an accident during the pre. Uh, right. Of the- Right. Lose certain like kind of the oh. gym hit me and then oh no fucking so the on the actual day of the show I was like containing myself <laughs> sitting in front with an arm with the brace and then big oh wow thing and the man looking me looking at me from the stage and he's smiling and what the hell are you doing there right but that was a great experience uh, also for me um singing a song like ahimsa. alongside yeah. so it was really exciting because he wanted that song again you know he's he's very very uh, precise with i think the messages he brings out in all his mm. songs mm. this was again something he really really wanted to do with everything going on in the world you know i have some other talk to and he even told me he said do you think people will not connect with it if you don't believe in it anymore and i said it's like no we make people believe in it <laughs> 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 I, no interest. yeah so Actually, I have to tell you something interesting about this track, but I'll tell you after the podcast. Uh, this this has been a magical track, but I want to describe to you. But I can't describe to you while on the podcast. It's something very personal and special. Um, I will. And uh, dude, on that note, maybe I was going to ask you maybe a line or two from that song. From Ahimsa. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to do. The, I'll have to do Bono justice now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna play it because uh, yeah, I'll just, yeah. <clears throat> uh, I'll meet you where the sky is falling. I'll meet you in the end. I'll meet you before the world was born. We had not a care. This is an invitation to a. A location from someone who wants to be loved. This is a meditation in your radio station. If you like it, you can sing along. A hymn song. A hymn song. A hymn. 
ahimsa ahimsa wow amazing man beautiful wow really cool so, so what what can i do to get riday over to melbourne <laughs> Yeah. just just ask the lockdown to open up <laughs> <laughs> i'll be more than happy to yeah, of course happy. i mean i i'm i'm seriously planning i want to uh want to chat with everyone else who has come on the podcast and then do something about it you should do is take the gem next to do a tribute concert to air oh that's a great that's, idea that's a great idea and uh uh run and organized by yourself sir <laughs> <laughs> yeah and uh uh even uh, more specifically i remember bamba bamba bakia saying uh oh deepak sir i really love him <laughs> how does it feel when so many of the artists just say i love deepak sir sir i'm just i'm just curious because how can one man get so much love from so many people You were you know, talking. You were talking in front of. You want me to talk in front of the person <laughs> who's got some two thousand million people who love him? Just a little twenty. Come on, give me a break. <laughs> no, but still, sir. I think what's lucky is I'm lucky in all of this. I think all 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 the love that he gets or the blessings are coming on to me. That's so. <laughs> no, honestly, you know what? I um, may not be a a trained musician. but my mind has always been on my soul has always been like a musician so yeah. right from school we used to have an amateur band where i used to play yeah. the guitar and try and sing some sit songs <laughs> on stage so the music has been something which has been part of my life since beginning yeah yeah and uh, therefore when you are a musician by heart you don't you, and then you're a creative person you don't see this work as a business yeah. so you meet with the musicians like soulmates yeah yeah so that's the reason why you get that reaction you know it's both ways you mm. go to you connect because you're connecting with them as two talent so yeah i guess that would be the real reason one of the most important things these guys said to me was the fact that they felt more respected as an artist while you were around so like i think a uh, while ago i mean you know if you are a musician you connect with the artist and you see the person as an artist and not like somebody else so correct i guess yeah Yeah. And uh, sir coming towards the end of the show I mean I know for the fact that AR is definitely going to watch this when he sees this link come out and I was just going to one thing he doesn't have the patience to see through so long <laughs> <laughs> only you could never know <laughs> even if he does he'll go okay forward okay forward 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 I'm done with <laughs> Well, even, even when I was, uh, I was I was showing him the music video which I had directed for him, the first one. Yeah. One was on well, like well, like okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, um, he saw a little bit of it, and I was trying to show him the movie. He said, "Okay, okay, later on." And then <laughs> I was one. And then I get a reaction from Sahira, not more from him, that hey, I like the video. And then later on, I realized that he actually never saw, uh, sat and saw through the entire video at one go. So he started parts. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Like. <laughs> but he reads every word that he gets. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And uh, so I was just going to ask the, you. The, sorry. Sorry. And just yeah. Especially in the initial days, I remember this since we are talking reference yeah. of content. Yeah. First DVD that we came out with, which was a concert that I had done with him in the Shine Auditorium in LA. Yeah. In uh, Aramal Live in the concert. to see that video also he never i don't know i don't think even till date he has seen the entire thing <laughs> right so, wow yeah. so yeah he is not especially when it comes to those days so i remember if i just uh, yeah have a look oh too much of me man no <laughs> i don't see <laughs> so how do you sit with him and actually watch a movie when you were in movie is something else the movie yeah. you're not watching your work no you're right. not watching your work right. something else <laughs> right okay Uh so I was going to ask is there a message or something that you want to give to AR if at all he keeps fast forwarding and gets to this point and he watches this last 30 seconds I will tell him I am most blessed to have and I will always till my deathbed cherish those 22 years of work and experiences and times and moments shared with him and come what may you know he is going to be on the top of my mind 
<laughs> wow, you're so humble, sir. Right. Hriday, coming over to you, man. You've got A.R. Rahman as your mentor and any message for him? Uh, I think for me, um, it's he's probably like uh, my musical godfather, uh, you know, and uh, everything I know and have learned is uh, good to see him. Yeah. So, so the kind of things that I want to tell him is that, you know, like, um, I wish that he's always the way he is, um, always happy, go lucky, really yeah. and loving. Uh, uh, he's quite a child, you know. He, he, yes. he's very, he's a child like <laughs> I hope always stays like this, and uh, you know, yeah. I'm, yeah, I think that's what I like to say. Nice. <laughs> Thank you for everything. Yeah, right. right. Guys, uh, thank you so much for coming on to this podcast. I truly enjoyed it and it was just magical. 